the last time I promised I'd show you how to make these cool survival fire starters at home. Now it's time to do it, so let's get to it. Oh, and by the way, if you were wondering what the hell is smoking so bad, I'm scaring off bugs. Smoking punkweed works fantastic. So, first of all, what we're gonna need for this is beeswax and coconut butter. But in this case, it's already liquid. It's so hot out here that this will not need melting. We will also need some cotton pads, some kind of container, cooking pot, something like that. And you don't need a gas stove, but it's a lot easier to control the flame. So first we put some water in the cooking pot. We place the other container inside the cooking pot and that's how we're gonna melt our wax. You can start putting your wax in here straight away but what you have to do, what you have to think about first is how much you have because proportions matter. So right here, right now, I only have this tiny bit of coconut butter and we put three parts of coconut butter to two parts of beeswax. If I pour this much in, probably only gonna have to put this much of wax. And this doesn't have to be very accurate. It depends how runny you want it to be or how thick you want it to be. In the summer, it's probably best if it's a little thicker because it's naturally gonna melt. And if you're wondering why we're using a, a cooking pot instead of putting the wax can straight over the fire, it's just to avoid accidental spillage and overheating the wax, which can actually catch fire. So while we're waiting, uh, it's gonna take some time because whilst the coconut butter has the melting point of about 25 degrees centigrade, beeswax have a melting point of about 45 degrees centigrade. So in the meantime, I'm gonna show, show you what I've done here is I've prepared some sticks. They were bone dry, but I just put them in water here to soak for a good few minutes. And we're gonna try and light them with the fire starter that we were making. Okay, the fire starter is almost ready. I mean, the mixture, it's not the fire starter yet. We can turn the gas off because the water will be hot for several minutes anyway. So we take some paper or an old rag, take one of the cotton pads and dip it in quickly. Put it here, allow it to dry or set. Right, so we're gonna let this cool and in the meantime, because I have so much of this beeswax, I'm gonna make myself some candles. So let's melt some more. Okay, so the pads have cooled down. Let's try and separate them and see if we can light these soaking wet sticks. So you can light this with a lighter, with a match, 
if you tear it up like this to expose the fibers, it will even catch fire from a ferrocerium rod. And to make things even more difficult for our little fire starter, let's put it in water. Let's see how this is going to work. Okay, so after 3 minutes and 48 seconds, looks like the twigs are burning on, on their own now. Let's take them out and see how much longer the fire starter is going to burn. Okay, I think we're gonna call it. It looks like it's dying now. I don't think we would actually start a fire with something like this. Still, over 12 minutes. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's much better than I thought. It's probably because it was wet. So let's try and light a dry one. We saw that the wet one didn't really want to catch fire that easily. It did eventually, it didn't really take that much. But the dry one should catch a lot easier. There's one thing about this fire starter I haven't told you about yet. First of all, let me tell you how you could carry it. You can carry it in any tin container, like a spent box of air rifle pellets. And this stuff can be used for all sorts of things. Let me just tell you about one probably unknown application. So I bet many of you have had this problem before. Hands completely messed up, dirty in pine resin, pine pitch. What do you do with this out in the woods? Well, if you carry your fire starter with you, you can just smear it all over your knife and your hands and give it some time. My hands are already clean. It's already come off. It was a little more stuck to the knife, but it's coming off as well. Not to mention that it actually protects your blade from rusting. There we go. So not only have you cleaned your knife, you've also protected the steel from rusting. Not only, not only have you cleaned your hands, but also you've applied some fantastic hand cream. What else? Well, we can also use this for our handles, if you have a wooden handle. Although, the problem with that is that the handle may become more slippery. Apart from those applications, you can also use it on any leather work that you have. The leather scabbards, even on your boots. 
and whilst this probably doesn't provide many calories but it's actually edible so I don't know I probably wouldn't recommend this as a survival snack but you can eat it and if you apply it to your knife you don't have to worry about being poisoned or something also when you smear this all over your hands you don't have to wash them before eating so I suppose that's another good thing about this stuff that it's completely environmentally friendly and edible all right thanks a lot for watching make sure to click like share and subscribe visit my website simonsdiscoveries.com and see you in another video